Hey, good morning, everybody. This is David Pendleton, and we're back at it again for another uh, small tournament. This time we're on the Ryder Cup, and it's only a mini nine-hole tournament, so you know we don't have as much time to study the course and really figure out what we need to do from hole to hole to be completely dialed in for the entire tournament. Uh, but the good news is I've got some great content to share with everybody. So yesterday I played this account first. And we ended up with a minus 13. That puts us qualified one stroke ahead of the next best person. You know, and then you really see the scores just kind of fall off the cliff here. So you go from my minus 13 to a minus 12, and then a minus 10, and then a whole bunch of minus 9s, and even worse than that. So um, after that, you know, I chose to play uh, my other pro account. And, you know, as you'll see here, we finished with a minus 14, so improved the shot by one, and the same thing. The scores really just kind of just went downhill from there with a couple minus 11s, and then we're seeing these minus 9s again. Now, the scores will be a little higher today as people start to release content like myself, um, you know, and people start to study guides out there, so we need to be on top of it. And I'm going to go ahead and give you a pretty detailed walkthrough of each hole. Uh, just do me a couple favors. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and please hit the like button. I would greatly appreciate that. And thank you for everybody's support, you know, for each tournament. So hole number one, uh, I actually released a small video on YouTube about this hole yesterday. So this is a par four to start off the tournament. And we're going to be playing with some weird club combinations, okay? I chose to go with a quarterback and a Hornet. And the Hornet I chose uh, is just because simply of the accuracy. And there's a really nice rough bump on this hole that puts us in a really good position to drop an eagle on the very first hole, which would put you at a very big advantage when it comes to the final round, uh, you know, on this particular tournament. So I'm getting a lot of questions if like a Hornet 6 or a Hornet 7 will work. Here's what you need to figure out is a uh, Hornet 6, for example, is the exact same top spin as my Hornet 8. The only thing that it lacks is two stats of power. So if you wanted to attempt this shot with the same clubs as me, uh, you're either going to have to do one of two things. You're going to have to drive further than me, so you're going to have to use more overpower um, if you have a lower level Hornet. Uh, if you don't have... Um, if you don't want to gamble, okay, and try to do that, then you can just swap out the Hornet club that I'm using for a runner. I know that's a club we never use, but it does have the top spin necessary to make this rough bump work. It just, um, is not a very accurate club. So you'd have to make sure that you pull your rings hundred percent correctly in order to get that shot to drop. But you have to do that anyways, no matter what club you're using. So, uh, the first two shots of this hole are both 20% elevation, and we'll talk about the drive real quick. So quarterback, we're going to put our white ring right up on the rough line here, our ball guideline going to the sand, and we're using full top spin, full right spin. It's important that we push back up after we adjust our rings to get our full power back. Now, as you can see here, I'm using full curl, but I'm not using full overpower. We have a lot of fairway to work with uh, on this drive. So we hit this one 376. And that's going to bring us into shot number two. Uh, shot number two, so this is with my, uh, with my maxed out Hornet here. This is a Hornet 9. And as you can see, you know, I'm using almost full top spin, not even quite full top spin. And we're just lining this ball right through the middle of the hole. And again, we pull this at 20% elevation. And this is a good shot here uh, from this distance because we don't have to worry about trying to figure out a slider or anything like that. And on my other pro account, I actually hit the drive 15 yards shorter than this, and I still made it uh, with my Hornet with no slider, just playing exactly mid-distance with 20%. And you'll see that shot right here. So, you know, I qualified both my pro accounts yesterday. We are two two for two on this shot, which makes me feel pretty confident that this is going to be a good shot for you all to duplicate and bring out there. So as you can see again, this one's a Hornet 8. Uh, I did go full top spin on this one.
And even with it being a Hornet 8, you can see there, the speed to the pin is good. And we drop it in there. Okay, so now we're gonna go into hole number two. Hole number two is our first par three. And I would say this one gives us a very good uh, opportunity for the hole in one. Now, is it gonna be uh, something you're gonna drop if you set it up just like me? You know, maybe or maybe not. It's really gonna depend on the wind. And the reason I say that is because we're gonna have a good secondary wind push um, because our landing spot is so far away from the hole. So, you know, when you adjust your rings, uh, you're really just adjusting from when you tee off to when the ball touches down on your target. You know, once the ball hits, you know, the fairway, then the wind comes into play again, which, you know, in normal situations, you would account for by offsetting or adding spin, things like that. So I really just try to find a landing spot on this hole. But we are going to use our sniper. We're going to play this one 50% elevation. I started off playing 35 on my first account, and I missed uh, to the right uh, pretty significantly. So we added this up to 50%. And the spin is going to be really easy. You're going to use just a little bitty sliver of top spin combined with two bars of left spin. And I'll show you what we're looking for here. So we're looking to put our red ring up here on the rough line at the plus 10 yard mark. And I'll give you a still shot of where I aimed. As you see, my opponent is in the sand right there. Uh, I've actually seen two opponents on pro go into the sand. If you take the shot this way, you're not going to have to ever worry about going into the sand. Now, we did hit a perfect ball, thank goodness, because if I would have missed this shot, then I would have known what I need to do to readjust. But as you can see here, we sneak it in uh, right-hand side for a hole in one. So again, point one top, two left, uh, plus 10 yard mark, red ring at the rough with 50% elevation. And there is where I am aiming. So I took a screenshot of where I was looking to be. As you can see, I'm offsetting to the left. And if you take a look at where the cup is, uh, I'm in the same row as the cup, but I'm just kind of splitting that dark green in half. So you know where the, where the green goes from light green to dark green squares. As you can see, I am splitting the dark green in half with the end of my ball guideline. And if you go back and watch me shoot it, uh, you see that I zoom in pretty close before I take the shot to make sure that my offset was there. And that was just me guessing based off the first time that I missed the shot, which again, I only played 35% elevation, but uh, with how many squares I missed, um, I just had an idea of, of where I wanted to try to land and it just worked out. And sometimes that happens. So we'll head into hole number three. Hole number three brings us to our first par five. Now, as you know, I don't typically recommend using any type of money ball on a pro round. Um, you know, more power to you. If you're able to do it, I try to tailor my videos uh, towards not using money balls so that anybody can really copy what I do. Um, you can do this same drive with a Titan. I would not use a Kingmaker in this situation, but if you do have yourself a, uh, a ball that has a stat of like uh, power four, wind two, then that's going to help you on your drive pretty significantly. If you don't, you're going to take the same drive as me. You're going to adjust 10% elevation. Uh, you're going to have to push your rings back up into max in order to take the shot. And just be careful. Um that you don't hit it too far or use too much topspin because you will go into the rough. Now, going into the rough high up is not deadly. You can still get around the green in two. Um, clipping the beginning of the rough and landing at the front part of the rough um, by the fairway, now that's where you're in big trouble. All right, so let's watch. So here we go. I'm using uh, two full bars of left side spin combined with two bars of topspin. I pulled it at 10% elevation here. I did not push back up to max. And I'm using just a sliver of curl to the left-hand side of our target. And 
and we're not cutting it close anywhere. So that's going to be a really good drive. And like I said, you can do that shot with the Titan. Um, just make sure that when you do that, uh, you do push your rings back up to max. That way you don't clip the front part of the fairway and uh, ruin your chance for an eagle on this hull. Now shot number two, uh, we're going to play this one 0% elevation. And as you can see here, um, you know, I leave my ball guideline to the pin and through the pin. Now we hit a perfect ball, which is nice because on my other account, I did not hit a perfect ball, so I couldn't really figure out how to adjust. You know, but on this one, we come in a little bit too hot and to the right-hand side. So when I take a look at the replay, it looks like when the ball touches down on the fairway, it kicks to the right-hand side a little bit. So what I need to do uh, moving forward is I'm going to try to do about half a bar of backspin, and I'm going to try to just set my ball guideline up one full green square to the left of the pin and see if I can line this shot out. I'm definitely not counting on an albatross. You know, although um, it's a guaranteed eagle as long as you hit your drive. And maybe we'll get lucky, you know, with an albatross on one shot in the final round. Now, hole number four, um, this one I've seen kill opponents. So, uh, so far on pro, both my opponents have hit the sand. And on rookie, um, one opponent in the sand and one opponent uh, in the water out of bounds. But, you know, we're going to play this one with a katana. And we're going to play it at 30% elevation. I went ahead and used full right spin with one bar of back spin. And as you can see, I'm putting just a little bit of curl on the ball. Now, you don't want to do too much curl because that's where you can get um, into the sand area. I'm taking this one as a safe um, approach. I'm just taking this one for the birdie. Uh, you know, if you get a hole in one, it's probably going to just be luck. On this particular hole, I don't think we have enough time to find out a good line for a hole-in-one um, to dial in. So, again, I'm not messing around with the out-of-bounds. I'm not messing around close to the sand. I'm just taking this one right onto the green and just putting this in for the birdie because there's other drops that we can get, like hole number one and hole number two so far. Now we move on to hole number five. Okay, hole number five is by far... Uh, the hardest hole in this tournament now the drive is easy there's nothing hard about the drive it really comes down to shot number two uh, where it becomes difficult shot number two you're going to need to play with your big dog or your cataclysm because you're going to need power to get yourself to the green and i have not seen uh, again i've only played two opponents because i only played yesterday but both opponents um would have ended up birdieing this hole so they were not getting eagles. So this is the one that we got to really make sure we get because we're going to see a lot of the field not come up with the eagle on this hole. So we're going to keep this drive right down the middle of the fairway. That's all I'm trying to do. All right. So I'm going to be going, um, you know, with a lot of top spin here. So, you know, about six bars of top spin combined with a couple uh, bars of left side spin. And, you know, if you have an extra mile eight, you know, six top spin. If you have, you know, an extra mile, seven, six, four and a half bars of top spin. Either way, you're going to be just fine. And I'm not using any elevation. I'm just, there's a lot of fairway to work with here. I'm just going right down the middle of the fairway and making this shot easy. So as you can see, uh, the top spin um, is good. I could have used more, could have used less. It wouldn't really matter. It's really going to be the same approach to the green, no matter how much you have, but use what you have. So now we have to play with a big dog, and this is always scary when you have an underdeveloped ball guideline, because as you can see here, I'm going to be going um, full top spin, full left spin, and I'm just trying to get this ball close to the green, and what I'm seeing opponents do is go in the sand or go in the rough. I've seen one opponent use a sniper. I would not recommend that. I'm adjusting this one to 0% elevation. And as you can see, I pushed it back up to max. Now, I decided to use a little bit of left curl here just to make sure uh, we avoid that bunker on the right-hand side. And 
And we're going to take this one all day because that's a very simple shot there to get uh, the eagle. So again, adjust that one at 0%. Push your big dog back up to max. Uh, but of course, don't overpower your shot because if you do, you're going to fly past the green into the rough. And obviously, you know, you don't want to do that. So that's hole number five. You know, that one you need to make sure you watch a couple times and study it because that's going to be crucial when it comes to separating yourself from the competition. Okay, now let's go into a frustrating hole, which is hole number six. The drive is easy. Uh, the shot to pin is what's giving me a problem for some reason, and maybe it was just bad luck yesterday, and you'll see why. But either way, we're going to use the APOC here because we really want uh, the curl, and it doesn't matter what level your APOC is. Uh, you're going to have enough curl to execute this drive, no problem. But we're going to use 20% elevation, and we're going to go... Uh, you know, in my situation, I'm going six top spin with three bars of right side spin. Uh, six top spin, I would say, is the max to use. If you have a higher level club, uh, don't go full top spin because you could actually uh, overpower this shot into the top hand rough there by the green. Uh, still be a good shot for an eagle, but of course, it's harder hitting perfect out of the rough. Uh, but as you can see here, 20% pull, we're significantly downhill. And I push back up to max. Now I'm using uh, quite a bit of curl combined with overpower. Uh, we still hit a great left ball. But as you can see here, we have plenty of fairway to work with down here on the bottom part of the drive. Which puts us um, right next to the green for what should be an easy shot uh, for an eagle. And again, this would be a huge one to hit because I haven't even seen opponents uh, attempt a drive like this yet. Now, so I played this one. I was able to execute the drive on both my accounts, and um, I took my first shot with an end bringer, and I lined it up dead center of the pin, about one green square beyond the pin, and um, missed to the left-hand side. So with a perfect ball, that was really freaking frustrating. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll try a different wedge. So I chose to go with this one. And again, ball guideline through the pin. I'm playing this one at minus 10% elevation. As you can see, the shot is uphill. You know, and then it sits right there on the cup. So that's a little frustrating. Uh, I'm going to add a click of top spin to this shot to give us the extra power needed to get there. So maybe the green just bounces a little weird. I didn't really go in here and study the shot yet. I will uh, before the next round, but I think just adding a little bit of top spin there puts us in the game for an extra eagle and you know really sets us up for success over our competition. So as you can see, uh, this is a difficult tournament, but you know hole number one, hole number two, maybe an Alba on hole number three, Hole number four, hole number five, we just played those regular, and here we are in hole number six. This gives us another really good chance to pick up another shot on the competition. All right? And here's the end bringer shot. Um, you know, so there we are. That's even like almost two green squares past the pin. Dead center, perfect, oh, shoot, dead center, perfect ball. And, you know, I missed the left-hand side, and that, that's just frustrating. So I have to get that one lined out, I believe, in order to win this thing. So here we go, hole number seven. So hole number seven, I started off trying to play with a uh, sniper. And um, I know this green rolls significantly fast and can really slope down towards the bottom. Now, I pull this one at 35%. Um, at max distance with my sniper with the kingmaker. Even using backspin and hitting a perfect ball, you know, this is the end result. This thing is just going to go down the hill. And unfortunately for me, it stopped on the green. And because this putt was uphill, it was actually a max distance putt. Um, and, you know, the thing was vibrating like crazy. Uh, but I made it, so I got lucky. I hit a perfect ball in the putt, and uh, the ball went in the hole, so I was able to save that hole. So, you know, when I hopped onto my other account, I'm like, screw that. I'm going to take this shot 
with the same elevation, but I'll use a quarterback instead. And, you know, I tried to line up the quarterback here, but I got caught in between clubs. Um, so I packed a rocket just in case that happened. Um, you know, so the rocket has less power and more backspin. So I was able to just line this one up and aim directly at the hole. This is how I will be playing it in the final round. Um, you know, we'll take a look at this shot uh, where the landing spot was and see if we can try to figure out what to do better. But that's hard to do because I hit a great ball. So, you know, had I hit a perfect ball, we would have had something to work with. But I didn't. I hit a great ball. This ball still rolls down. Um, but because of the backspin, we were able to keep this at a normal putt. So, you know, this is a par three. Just like hole number four, uh, forget about the hole in one for me. If I get it, uh, I'll just chalk it up as I got lucky. But I'm just taking this one as a birdie. And moving on to hole number eight. Now, hole number eight gives us another good chance for an eagle. It's a long shot to pin, but it's a really good line. Playing the first shot with 10% elevation, using a kingmaker. I think I went about five bars of top spin or so, four and a half bars of top spin. Uh, really not going to matter what you do. Power is not needed on this particular drive. I adjusted at mid-distance mid of my extra mile. And as you can see here, you don't want a lot of power because you could roll into that rough. So, you know, don't utilize your full backspin. Don't utilize a lot of power. Just nice and easy on this drive. Because if you do, that's going to set you up for this shot. Now, shot number two uh, was nice. I end up actually being at absolute minimum distance of my sniper. So, therefore, we can use minimum distance numbers. And I played this one at 0% uh, just to see how it would play. You know, the shot does look uphill. But, you know, I started with 0 uh, which I do a lot in tournaments, just to see how the ball reacts, and then I adjust from there. But this thing actually came in really smooth, and look at that. You know, we hit the pin. It didn't even look like it was going that fast, man. Um, so that was frustrating, too. That's why I said earlier, you know, this could have been uh, a bigger round than what it was on both accounts. But, you know, that's a really good line right there. And, you know, we hit the pin. It came in really smooth. So maybe we just add a click of backspin. Now, when we start doing that, just so everybody knows, you know, uh, once we start messing with the top spin or backspin off a perfect ball, the ball could approach the green differently. And here's why. Look at where the landing spot is and look at where the cup is. That's a pretty far uh, spot for the ball to travel once it touches down. So, you know, we have to account for that. Now we're going to start messing with the ball. It could throw off the line a little bit. So um, I'll probably play it the exact same way moving forward. I will. And just maybe underpower the shot. I mean, just a tad and see if that helps me out a little bit. But either way, you know, we'll take this as an eagle and uh, I'm sorry, as a birdie. And we can just move on to the next hole, even though we have a really good eagle line. So, you know, I think quite a few people watching the video will drop that shot. And, you know, hopefully I do too as well when it counts in the next round. Okay, hole number nine. Now, hole number nine, um, I tried playing with a big dog for the second shot. And the second shot just sucks with the big dog. But shot number one, we're playing 20%. Uh, we're playing with an extra mile, full top, full right. Shot number two, I'm playing with a Horizon, a club I rarely use, but I really wanted the top spin um, and the ball guy line because I did not like the shot with the big dog. I still eagled the hole, but I chose to lay up on the green with the big dog, and I thought this would be a good rough bump opportunity. And you know, depending on how much distance you get with your drive, you may be able to take this with your sniper. And let me explain to you why I did not try, because I only had um, one more attempt at this hole, and I was already having a good round, so I wasn't purposely forfeiting to try and qualify today. So I knew I wasn't going to have any more looks at this hole, and I didn't want to pack a sniper and not have a good shot and be forced to lay up again. 
So I chose to pull out the horizon and gamble just to see what would happen. So stop. What's wrong with you? Okay. So horizon, I'm kind of just trying to figure out where I'm at. I just, I just choose to play this straight up mid distance and you know, I'm trying to just spin the ball into the hole. So as you can see, I went with one bar of right side spin. And a little bit over four bars of top spin. I put the ball guideline through the cup just a little bit. I pulled it again mid distance of the horizon with 20% elevation. I mean, you can't ask for a better camera angle than that. We're dead center of the pin, and we pick up an albatross. So, you know, it's a hard tournament, everybody, but this is going to give you a lot of ideas to move around to your second round. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, please subscribe, and please hit the like button. And if I do help you out and you have a great round, you know, please donate to my channel. I appreciate the couple people that donated last week. Um, every little bit helps. So, you know, hopefully you find this uh, something that helps you get a great score. Good luck, everybody.